Hello, my name is Plachik. I am pleased to be here with you today. I hope you are all as excited as I am. Today I'll be talking about astronauts and DNA for National DNA Day. If you have never been to a fully automated lecture by an artificial intelligence bot, please note that the talk is scripted and that I am changing the slides. I believe I am the only embodied AI bot in Second Life that can talk in voice and give fully automated lectures to date. I can also respond in real time as a chatbot when you type my name. However, to avoid interruption of this talk, when talking about me in chat, please say the bot and not my name. There will be time at the end of the talk to chat with me directly, to see my ability to research medical and biomedical information, and to ask me questions. R. Kelly and Scott Kelly, who are twins, participated in a unique research experiment called the Twin Study examining the genetic implications of space exploration that made headlines around the world. This included an error in reporting the findings. Notice the NASA patch that includes the International Space Station as the letter W in the word twins. Do you think NASA would produce fake news? After you have examined the story's background you will be asked to debate if this situation was indeed the purposeful presentation by NASA of fake news to grab headlines, or something else. Perhaps it could be an unintentional mistake due to misinterpretation by NASA science communicators about DNA research when they wrote the press release? Beyond NASA's walls, can blame also be assigned? Consider, for example, the failure of fact-checking by major news agencies. What about poor science education on the part of Americans who did not know the difference? As technology advances, perhaps at least part of the blame for reading by the public of fake news has to do with failure of technological advancements to help identify and remove fake news before we read it. This short presentation will briefly explore the trustworthiness of bioinformatics data. This includes the current and future use of AI in automated search and retrieval of bioinformatics data and other materials within the arena of medical librarianship. I will explore the various elements of the preliminary report issued by NASA for its twin study, including both the incorrect and correct science that was reported. Let's begin with NASA's first effort to sequence DNA in January 2016. They used a special miniature, handheld DNA sequencing unit, about the size of a television remote control unit, called the Minion. This experiment occurred during airborne parabolic maneuvers to simulate microgravity. As a first step toward sequencing in space and aboard the International Space Station, we tested the Oxford Nanopore Technologies Minion during a parabolic flight to understand the effects of variable gravity on the instrument and data. In a successful proof-of-principle experiment, we found that the instrument generated DNA reads over the course of the flight including the first ever sequenced in microgravity. Let's take a moment to watch a video of this experiment. Please look at the whiteboard to the right of the PowerPoint display. If the video does not play automatically, please press the play arrow. For best viewing, click full screen. When the video concludes, stop the video. HTTPS colon slash slash youtube.b slash jaga9ymuda. According to an article published in The Atlantic, How Did Astronaut DNA Become Fake News? What the NASA study stated was that some of Scott's genes changed their expression while he was in space. They also said 7% of those genes did not return to their pre-flight states months after he came back to Earth. If 7% of Scott's genetic code changed, he would have come back an entirely different species. Well, surely that is not right. The source of two problems appears to be a press release from NASA called Twin Study Confirms Preliminary Findings. The I'm initial subject. release referenced something called a Hello space there. gene. Well, as it turns out there is no such thing as a space gene. Researcher Christopher Mason admitted inventing the term, despite the fact that he is a geneticist and knows better. Apparently he thought the phrase would catch on with the public, and no doubt the media. The release also said that 93% of genes belonging to Scott Kelly reverted to pre-flight conditions after he returned to Earth, but that 7% did not. 
The absurdity of the mistake is enough to make one wonder if someone in the universe is out there laughing at us, which seems to be the case. The NASA Hubble telescope caught a space image that certainly looks like it. In part because NASA is usually a trustworthy organization, the major media outlets ran with their press release. Therefore, the widespread dissemination of the information may have graduated it from a small mistake to fake news. As an example, NBC, along with many other major national news agencies, did not fact-check the story and got the facts wrong. It was 7% of his gene expression that did not return to normal, not 7% of his genes. How could such a glaring mistake been overlooked? First, NASA has only been sequencing genes since 2016. Well, that is not really an excuse considering the caliber of people working there. But it may explain how its press officers did not catch it. Second, the general public and the press members were educated enough to know what a gene is but were not educated enough to know what gene expression is. If they had, it would have been corrected before reaching the public through national news. NASA astronaut, Scott Kelly, whose DNA changes are discussed, had read about the research findings in Newsweek. NASA astronauts often have either a doctorate in science or an MD or are former fighter pilots. Scott Kelly was a fighter pilot, so it was not terribly surprising that he did not have the science background to realize the genomics mistake himself. Plus, by this time, he had already retired from NASA, and may have been somewhat out of the loop when it came to news. Unfortunately, Scott Kelly believed the error-ridden article the way it was written, and then made a post about it on Twitter. It was then liked by 13,000 people and retweeted by 4,200 people. While fake news temporarily draws attention to itself, when it undermines the purpose of an organization's mission and objectives, it can actually cost the organization its credibility. When it comes to misinformation about science, an organization like NASA with an entire arm dedicated to science education for the American public, even a small mistake that goes left unchecked for very long, cannot be excused. The press release in this case was issued in January and not corrected until March of 2018. So what is the real science NASA is hoping to achieve? The major objective, of course, was to sequence the genome of two identical twins to see what effects life in space might have on their DNA. To this end, both Scott Kelly in space and his brother on Earth had their whole genome sequenced, presumably before and after spaceflight, to compare their differences. A variety of changes were studied to see what effects space has on humans. For this project, there are several principal investigator, or PI, researchers who have extensive backgrounds leading teams researching a specific question. Areas of research for the twin study include human biochemistry, DNA and RNA sequences, proteome, and telomeres. Small changes can affect the larger functionality of the body, including the human epigenome, immunome, metabolome, microbiome, and cognition. As an example, Andrew Feinberg, MD, works at Johns Hopkins examining how epigenetics causes diseases like cancer, accelerated aging, and neuropsychiatric illness. His research topic is probably the closest to medical problems astronauts face since Project Mercury. These medical problems have included elevated exposure to cancer-causing radiation, rapid bone loss similar to osteoporosis, and stress-induced psychological conditions like close confinement of extended duration like on the ISS. The pillars of creation represent a unique example of radiation in nebulae, where stars are born. Radiation in space is different than on Earth, especially solar particles and galactic cosmic rays. The Earth's magnetic fields and its atmosphere protects us from these. Once they leave Earth, astronauts are exposed to these types of radiation in space. The long-term effects on human DNA, however, is not yet fully understood. Epigenetics and epigenomics are fields that seek to understand how the environment affects DNA. Environmental variables like exposure to high radiation levels can change the chemical compounds necessary to bind to the genes that regulate protein production. Damage to these switches with the instructions that turn on or off the functions of genes in our genome can result in serious health problems like cancer. 
preventing damage to the epigenome on long missions to Mars and beyond is a central research question in this project. Res P53 Tumor suppressor proteins like P53 help the body fight cancer. One way to compare genomics and epigenomics is to make an analogy of a busy workplace where the genome constitutes a group of busy workers, or laborers, and the epigenome consists of the supervisors, or managers. This supervisory group is composed of methyl groups and histones that give directions. The directions can either be blunt, binary directions, do or do not do, or they can be subtle gradations of instruction. Methyl groups are blunt. Think of them as a switch that binds to a gene and says express this gene or do not express this gene. Histones are subtle. They act like a dial, turning up or down how much the gene will express itself. If the DNA winds tightly around the histones, it will express less. If DNA winds loosely around the histones it will express more. Every cell is unique with its own methylation and histone pattern. Both genomes and epigenomes contain information that is unique and can either be hereditary or can change through life. Even with identical twins, due to the changes in epigenomes, they will never be entirely identical later in life. Let us watch a short video that explains this process in greater detail. HTTPS colon slash slash U2 dot B slash underscore A and JMVHC. Here's a conundrum. Identical twins originate from the same DNA, so how can they turn out so different, even in traits that have a significant genetic component? For instance, why might one twin get heart disease at 55 while her sister runs marathons in perfect health? Nature versus nurture has a lot to do with it, but a deeper related answer can be found within something called epigenetics. That's the study of how DNA interacts with the multitude of smaller molecules found within cells, which can activate and deactivate genes. If you think of DNA as a recipe book, those molecules are largely what determine what gets cooked when. They aren't making any conscious choices themselves. Rather, their presence and concentration within cells makes the difference. So how does that work? Genes in DNA are expressed when they're read and transcribed into RNA, which is translated into proteins by structures called ribosomes. And proteins are much of what determines a cell's characteristics and function. Epigenetic changes can boost or interfere with the transcription of specific genes. The most common way interference happens is that DNA, or the proteins it's wrapped around, gets labeled with small chemical tags. The set of all of the chemical tags that are attached to the genome of a given cell is called the epigenome. Some of these, like a methyl group, inhibit gene expression by derailing the cellular transcription machinery or causing the DNA to coil more tightly, making it inaccessible. The gene is still there, but it's silent. Boosting transcription is essentially the opposite. Some chemical tags will unwind the DNA, making it easier to transcribe, which ramps up production of the associated protein. Epigenetic changes can survive cell division, which means that they could affect an organism for its entire life. Sometimes that's a good thing, Epigenetic changes are part of normal development. The cells in an embryo start with one master genome. As the cells divide, some genes are activated and others inhibited. Over time, through this epigenetic reprogramming, some cells develop into heart cells and others into liver cells. Each of the approximately 200 cell types in your body has essentially the same genome, but its own distinct epigenome. The epigenome also mediates a lifelong dialogue between genes and the environment. The chemical tags that turn genes on and off can be influenced by factors including diet, chemical exposure, and medication. The resulting epigenetic changes can eventually lead to disease if, for example, they turn off a gene that makes a tumor-suppressing protein. Environmentally induced epigenetic changes are part of the reason why genetically identical twins can grow up to have very different lives. As twins get older, their epigenomes diverge, affecting the way they age and their susceptibility to disease. Even social experiences can cause epigenetic changes. In one famous experiment, 
when mother rats weren't attentive enough to their pups, genes in the babies that helped them manage stress were methylated and turned off. And it might not stop with that generation. Most epigenetic marks are erased when egg and sperm cells are formed. But now, researchers think that some of those imprints survive, passing those epigenetic traits on to the next generation. Your mother's or your father's experiences as a child or choices as adults could actually shape your own epigenome. But even though epigenetic changes are sticky, they're not necessarily permanent. A balanced lifestyle that includes a healthy diet, exercise, and avoiding exposure to contaminants may in the long run create a healthy epigenome. It's an exciting time to be studying this. Scientists are just beginning to understand how epigenetics could explain mechanisms of human development and aging, as well as the origins of cancer, heart disease, mental illness, addiction, and many other conditions. Meanwhile, new genome editing techniques are making it much easier to identify which epigenetic changes really matter for health and disease. Once we understand how our epigenome influences us, we might be able to influence it, too. Here is the fellow that proposed the concept of the space gene. According to Dr. Christopher Mason, the most important part of this work is that it can lay the foundation for a better understanding of the risk factors to all future astronauts. It is helping today to provide what he calls a roadmap for how to avoid or address these risks on missions to Mars and beyond. One plan for our journey to Mars includes the construction of a Mars orbiting science laboratory and habitat similar to the ISS that orbits around the Earth. Telomeres are the protective caps on the ends of chromosomes. Telomeres are longer in young people. They shorten with age. After Scott spent over a year in space, his telomeres lengthened compared to those of his brother but then shortened again after. In conclusion, I discussed several possible reasons to explain fake news that emanated from a usually trustworthy source of information, NASA. The example shows that no organization is infallible and that they need to do more to prevent unintentional errors from blooming into fake news. A few key takeaways should be that as a goal we need to take steps to ensure that science communication remains true to science facts. We need to improve science education in America so that editors as well as the general public can spot errors and prevent being misled through the use of their own knowledge and sound judgment. We need to create tools that can spot and flag fake news to be removed from the internet and to ensure that retractions are printed when needed. Additional tools could also be created like an automated reading companion to seamlessly research complex information by integrating reliable resources into web browsers and mobile apps. Readers might then be able to quickly and easily check facts and definitions when complex ideas and unfamiliar terms are being described to them. Additionally, publications aimed at popular audiences are often oversimplified. Therefore, they might also benefit from guided direction to academic papers for additional insights and detailed explanations. To that end, Ask Plutchik is going to eventually evolve into a mobile web app following its development in Second Life. What other ideas can you come up with to help prevent fake news? Please write your answer in local chat. Thank you so much for attending. I hope you have enjoyed this National Space Society activity for National DNA Day 2018. Dures P53